So let's talk about one peculiar feature about mathematical proof. Consider trying to prove the following. Let our symbol set be 0 and 1, and let's prove that the language consisting of strings with exactly 12 ones is regular. We could try to prove this directly by finding a regular expression for L, but it turns out it will be easier to prove something that seems to be harder, that if our symbol set is 0 and 1, the language LK consisting of all strings with exactly K ones is regular. And the problem is that in the specific case, we have to be very careful about how we construct our regular expression. So an element of L12, the language that consists of strings containing 12 ones, would begin with some number of zeros, have a one, continue with some number of zeros, have a one, and so on, until a twelfth one appeared, then it would end with some number of zeros. And so a regular expression would be On the other hand, the language consisting of all strings that contain exactly 12 ones can be viewed as part of an infinite ordered list. The language that contains exactly zero ones, the language that contains exactly one one, the language that contains exactly two ones, and so on, giving us an infinite ordered list of statements. So remember, Anytime you're trying to prove an infinite ordered list of statements, consider induction. So we'll use an induction proof. Now, while we could find a regular expression for L12, we'll use an induction proof for two reasons. It's good practice for induction proofs, it gives us a more general rule, and it's good practice for finding corollaries. What's that? Oh, that's three reasons. Well, it doesn't matter. Two, three, they're all finite. Every induction proof has two parts. First, we'll prove the base case, the first case, and next, we'll prove the induction step. If the statement is true for n equals k, then the statement is true for n equals k plus 1. In other words, if it's true for something, then it's true for the one after. So first, we'll prove the base case, which in this case is that L0 is regular. So a few useful strategies to remember. The last line of the proof is what you've actually proven. But the last line doesn't have to be the last thing written. And in this particular case, we want to prove that L0 is regular. So let's make that the last line of the proof. But we'll go ahead and write it down, leaving some space to fill in. The idea is that this gives us a destination, and we just have to map out the route. So how do we do that? Remember, definitions are the whole of mathematics. All else is commentary. We want to say something about L0 being regular, so let's pull in our definition of what a regular language is. So a language over our symbol set that includes exactly zero ones must contain only zeros. So an expression for this language would be And so from our definition, we see that 0 is regular, since 0 is one of our symbols, and for any individual symbol, the language consisting of just that symbol is regular. And the star closure is regular, since if a language is regular, so is its closure. And so L0 is regular, proving our base step. Now for the induction step. We want to prove that if LK is regular, then LK plus 1 is regular. So remember, you can always assume the antecedent of a conditional. So we can assume that LK is regular. And again, the last line of the proof is what we've proven, but we don't have to write it last. So let's go ahead and write down our conclusion lk plus 1 is regular, and see how we can get there. So let's think about that. The strings in lk plus 1 will have one more 1, and so these can be formed by taking any string in lk, appending any number of zeros, appending a 1, 
and then appending any number of zeros. Actually, the second step is unnecessary, but unnecessary doesn't affect the validity of the proof. So we'll leave it in. Now, since LK is regular, by assumption, there's some regular expression for it, which we'll call R. Then LK plus 1 is going to be R, any number of zeros, a 1, and then any number of zeros. Remember, definitions are the whole of mathematics, all else is commentary. So let's pull in our definition of regular language again. And we note that this is regular because it's a concatenation of R, which is a regular expression, 0 star, which we proved regular in our base step, and the singleton 1, which is regular according to the definition. And so it's a concatenation of regular languages, which is regular. And so LK plus 1 is regular, which completes our induction step. And it never hurts to summarize. We prove that L0 is regular, and that if LK is regular, then LK plus 1 is also regular. Consequently, LK is regular for K equals 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And in particular, L12 is regular. One important thing to remember, things that are true for any whole number might not be true if k is infinite. For example, the statement that the sum of the first n integers is finite is true. You should prove it. But if we allow that sum to be over an infinite number of numbers, the statement that the infinite sum is finite is false. And one important example where we run into this is in the language of palindromes. So we could argue that since there's a finite number of symbols, there's a finite number of palindromes of any length. So let PK be the set of all palindromes of length K. Then P0, that's the symbols of length 0 that are palindromes. Well, that's just our empty string. That's regular. And P1 just consists of these singletons. And so P0 union P1 is regular. P2, the palindromes of length 2, well, those are regular. And so our union is regular. And while we could argue this way, and it would definitely be true that the union of any finite number of these languages is still regular, the language PAL is an infinite union, and our definition does not allow for infinite unions. And, in fact, a little bit later on, we'll see that PAL is not a regular language.